Valentino he would have turned 52 years old today. His unsolved murder and bitter rivalry with the notorious B.I.G. came to define an era of hip hop. That beef started after a shooting right here in New York City. I've uncovered footage from that time many people haven't seen in decades. It's December 1st, 1994. The rare, raw footage of Tupac Shakur in a wheelchair the morning after he was shot in Manhattan. Despite five bullet wounds, the iconic rapper is on his way to court to hear the verdict in his sexual assault case. A series of events that would change his life and in turn rap history forever. I wanted to know more, so I searched deep into the Fox 5 archives from our reporting at the time. They'll have no fury like a woman sports. We found this impromptu press conference. Why am I the only one in court right now? Why is the cameras all on me? Not long after his arrest on the charges. I guess I am going to say that I'm a thug. That's because I came from the gutter and I'm still here. I'm not saying I'm a thug because I want to rob you and rape people and things. I'm a businessman. And outside the court as the trial was under way. I want straight up not guilty. And finally, the night he was shot in the lobby of Quad Studios on November 30th, 1994, a hot spot for rap artists at the time. That's Sean Diddy Combs outside as police arrived on scene. He was shot numerous times, at least twice in the head. Slate writer Joel Anderson, season three of the Slow Burn podcast details that night. So, He's basically in New York while he's on trial doing mixtapes, doing guest appearances on other artists' songs because he needed that money to pay his legal bills to get through that trial. We were granted exclusive access inside Quad Studios located on 7th Avenue in Times Square 29 years after the shooting. And on that night, Tupac was coming to this very space where we are right now. He was going to be a guest on a new track. But that's when it all happened down in the lobby of this building. He's walking around the corner and he hears some familiar voices from several stories above. And the people yelling at him were Lil C's and Chico Del Vec, both members of Biggie's affiliate rap group, Junior Mafia. And so they're all excited to see each other. And Lil C's runs down to the lobby to meet Tupac. Tupac was in the lobby of the building. He was waiting to go upstairs when those three gunmen entered. They demanded jewelry and cash. Tupac initially resisted. Then he was shot five times. And those gunmen made off with about $40,000 worth of jewelry. Eventually, Tupac was dragged into the elevator. What happened next would change the course of rap history forever. He said he grabbed the guy's gun and they were struggling back and forth. Legendary rapper Spice One was Tupac's friend. Together, they recorded classic hits like Jealous Got Me Strapped. He says Shakur told him the story of exactly how it happened. He said he, they both paused. When dude shot, and then he started pulling, you know, he looked at him in the face, and then he started struggling again. He said, a dude shot again, and then he shot one more time. He said, that's when he shot him in the groin area. And then he said, he, he said, you know, that's when I fell to the ground. Even though there's no evidence Biggie and Sean Combs were involved, Tupac publicly blamed them. Over the years, one man has claimed responsibility, saying he was hired to ambush Tupac and take his jewelry. Was it an inside job? Was it somebody that would just... They were timing it out. Video music box DJ and rap historian Ralph McDaniel says the feud that followed pitting East and West Coast against each other, culminating in Tupac and Biggie's still unsolved murders, would come to define a generation in hip hop, which still has consequences to this day. It'll never go away. And people just want to find out well, how did this happen. But I know one thing for sure is that they were best of friends and they were lovers of the culture. And what started that night changed the trajectory of hip hop and further pushed it into the mainstream. Those two men, Biggie and Tupac, remain relevant to this day. And just this month, Tupac was given a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. That's awesome. And it's like you think about their legacy. Mm -hmm. They were only alive for such a short period of time, not to mention they were only out, right? Putting out music for a short period of time, but they literally just changed the trajectory of hip hop, yeah. just true lyricists. Yeah. And you can still listen to that music today. 24 and 25 years old, the roots still in what a lot of kids listen to these days. Or need to listen to. 100%. I, I, I've never thought 
from answering any Tupac questions, which it, I could understand if um, I don't know how Quad Studio morphed into, like I was in Vegas and, and was part of the, the shooters that um, that actually ended in, in his demise. But let me say, me and, me and Tupac were friends. And me and him were friends. Um, I had nothing against Tupac. Um, I, I liked him. He was younger than me. Um, I'm, I'm sure that um, he looked up to me. Um, there's many moments that me and Pac had that were very intimate where he talked to me about things that he was afraid of or things that he loved to do. And, and, and all of those kind of things. Here it is, you have a prosecutor and you have a guy who's in jail for life. When they pulled Dexter down to interview him in regards to what he knew about me and Tupac and so on and so forth, I have no doubt at this point that Dexter probably was the guy or one of the assailants on um on um Tupac but Dexter's story just doesn't make sense. Dexter tells a story that I wanted a ring for my fiance and so I tell him to get the diamond ring from Tupac so I can give it to my fiance and so on and so forth. He tells this magical story. The only person that can believe such a story is Todd Kaminsky, who was the prosecutor who was trying to make something out of nothing. Dexter tried to sell a bill of goods to Todd Kaminsky and they, they had no verification. But, you know, I don't know why people gravitate to, to Dexter's story. Why is that the only plausible story? Because it, it, Tupac wasn't alone that night. He was with other people that night. So I don't, I don't, I don't know how Dexter, who comes out of nowhere, and he gives this this fabulous story about, you know, he. I, I, I don't, I'm not even sure what he pretty much says, but I know he says that I hired him to do it. Total, total nonsense, man. Total nonsense. I felt hurt because I, I wish that he he was able to um I, I wish he was able to answer the questions that you're asking me right now, and that way I, I wouldn't have to answer them because I don't know how to answer them. Outside of that, um, he's a rapper. He um he didn't only mention me in that album. He mentioned a lot of people. He started the record off naming other people. So I don't know how. The line where he mentioned me becomes so legendary when he mentioned ten other people in that 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 same record. But um, I don't have no problem with Pac Man, and um, I, I will never have a problem with I, you know. I wish like, again, I wish I was able to ask him the same question you just asked me, so we wouldn't even have to answer it. Follow me in the back room. You walk right behind me. I said, "Yo, you um." You dirty? And he didn't say nothing. He just looked. And I searched him. He had a hand on him. I said, come with me in the live room. Had a piano. So yo, give me that. Took his hand off his hip. Little Sean is in the vocal booth, but he come up from out the vocal booth. I don't know if he was down there laying nothing or what, but he was in the area where the vocals get laid at. So he come, it's, it's two doors you gotta come through to come from behind there. So he came from behind there, so I stopped him, grabbed him up, put the gun to him and shit, and I'm like, yo, nigga, the fuck is going on? Like I said, kicked everybody out of his session. Niggas got up out of there, they scrambled like roaches, they got the fuck up out of there. Anybody that was in there will know that that's a fact. So Sean, little Sean, he tried to get out of there as well, but I stopped him, asked him, I questioned him, like, what the fuck is going on? And without hesitation, the man said, yo, I don't know what all these people here doing at my session. I don't know these people. You know what I mean? My sessions don't be like that. I don't usually have all these people here. I was wondering what the fuck was going on. 
the way he was speaking is like he knew it was some bullshit going on. I was kind of pissed at Lil Sean because in his first interview, he said something about, oh, this dude was scared to death. I wasn't scared of you, nigga. You know what I mean? I wasn't fucking scared of you. You was scared of me, nigga. You know what I mean? And anybody in that motherfucking room know I'm the one that kicked everybody out your fucking session. You was trying to leave. But, you know, everybody got to make themselves look like they some tough guy or whatever. Yeah, I was fucking scared of fucking getting locked up because I know that the police that I was dealing with downstairs had called back up. And sure enough, like I said, the fucking man that worked at the studio let me know that they was on their way upstairs. So I'm trying to find a way to get out of there or get rid of this gun. Now, Sean, we walk into the vocal booth. He tried to help me get rid of the gun. He's like, yo, all right, let's get rid of the gun. So he goes, we look, it's, about, it's a fucking wall unit. You know what I mean? And behind the wall unit was a big-ass grand piano. And uh, it was dusty. It was dirty. It had a lot of dust on it. So he went to go for it, and I stopped him, like, chill. Hold on, bro. So I took the gun. I put it in my hat. I had a scully on I put the gun in my scully. A piano has a lip to where you don't have to touch the top of it to lift the hood up. I went up under the lip and I pulled the motherfucking top of the motherfucking piano up and I put the gun inside of the piano and then I let the lid back down without disturbing the dust or whatever. Because I know if they seen any prints or any type of disruption of the dust, it will make them go on inside the piano. And they never did. So they never found the other piece. Sean said some other shit that was totally inaccurate. It was no fear of you. You wasn't acting tough, motherfucker. You was humble. You sound like a humble dude. You know what I mean? The way you was expressing, you running around with Pac and Jack, and you seen how they was moving, and you was sitting in the back of the car scared because these niggas had guns and whoop de woo and this, you know, what have you. You know what I mean? I ran with Pac all the time, same fashion, and none of us was scared of shit. We cut from different cloths, bro, and you don't know me from a hole in the wall to be talking about... I'm in fear. I wasn't in fear of you, motherfucker. I was in fear of fucking going to prison. Wasn't nobody trying to get locked up for that bullshit. I do appreciate the help that you gave me. You helped me stash the gun. Yes, we did that. But it wasn't like you fucking, like, yo, let me get that up off, you know? Like, come on, you ain't even touched the motherfucking gun. If you're going to say some shit, man, just be accurate. Don't try to make yourself look tough. Park is coming to the studio to meet. Lil Sean, mm -hmm. right? Y'all in Quad, in the building of Quad, it's a lot of different floors with studios mm -hmm. in, it, yeah. in it, right? Um, you in one of the studios with Big in the Mafia. I, mean, I think we was on the, we was on the eighth floor. Y'all on the eighth floor. Reception desk is on the sixth floor. Okay. I don't think it's there no more, is it? That reception desk is probably not, definitely. Yeah. It's not there no more. But that's where the reception floor was. And right, back then. At that time, yeah. Um. You see him from the window, mm -hmm. from that from that little uh, balcony thing yeah, up there, balcony. and you, you scream out to him, "Yo, Pop, what up?" He see you. Yo, sees what up. He goes in, and then what happened from there? This I is mean, very important. I need you to speak later. I went so big from there, like yo, you know, yo, Pop downstairs. Right. Big like you lying. I'm like, nah, I'm dead serious. Pop downstairs. He's like, all right, bro, go get him. Y'all didn't know he was coming. We didn't know he was coming. See, that's the first thing. So we didn't know he was coming in to see. Little Sean or anybody. We didn't know that. That was our first Junior Mafia session we ever had. We we were calling players anthem in there. So this is the first time y'all in there as a group. As a group. Is yeah. Kim there? Yeah, yeah. All Kim of us there. Everybody Clark Kent that produced the record. Clark Clark Kent Kent is there. there. We all in the lab. Ross Banger is there. Yeah, Banger, Trife, the whole mafia, Nino. Nino. We all okay. in there. And just so happened me and Nino went to the uh you know, we went to the terrace and we would just talk regular shit. Like just got away from everybody and we just like, yo. Like, just, like, bugging off for that. We got a deal now. Like, yo, right. you can't believe it. Like, yo, we got a record deal. Like, now, we cut our own check. We got our own bread now. And next thing you know, I see a bunch of people walking downstairs. And we've been hanging out with Pac for, like, the last month, two months while he was right. going above the room. I know the walk. I see the bandana. Right. That's the first thing I do. You see somebody you fuck with. Yo, I'm a kid. I'm 15 right. years old. Yo, what's up, bro? He looking up. What that? What that? The C's. C's, what's up, little nigga? What up, little nigga? Yo. Come around the corner. I'm going to come downstairs and get you. Not knowing he was already coming in. So I run in the room. Go um, back. Pop downstairs. Hold on. So you thinking that he just pulling up to see y'all? I'm or? thinking he just random, just spurting through the city. And, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what happened in Manhattan at that time. Right. Running around, you know. I didn't think he was coming in. I didn't know he was coming in already. You know what I mean? We ain't supposed to have been there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so I'm like, 
you see somebody you fuck with. That's right. All right. I'm acknowledging them. Why should I not? Yes, indeed. No, I go in the room and I tell Big, yo, Big, pockets downstairs. Big, look, I go get them. And that's when I go downstairs. And the crazy part is Nino came with me. Right. Nino heard the shots in the elevator before we even got downstairs. You didn't hear him? Nah, I was just thinking about the weed, though. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even, like, I'm just like, man, that nigga, I know he got that. But Nino, like, you ain't hear that shit? I'm like, nah, I don't hear shit. So when we get downstairs, the elevator door opened, and God bless the dead, stretch from Live Squad. Right. He was real tall. So it opened on the, on the, on the, on the first floor. On the first floor. You know how narrow, you know, that right. is like real short from the right. wall. Right. Stretch is like six feet, six right. two, six five. So when the door opened, he was kicking his feet back off the door. Keep on the floor, though. You couldn't floor. see the two, couldn't see the two, two robbers that was on both sides. Right. So I'm just like thinking they drunk and just bugging out, and I walk out. Next thing you know, dude from the dude with the fatigue shit, just like, yo, get the fuck back in the elevator. I stepped right back in the elevator. Scared to death out of my mind. Did you see Pac? Years old. Nah, Pac was already shot in upstairs. Remember? Oh, he went to so the elevator. Nino heard, that's what Nino heard when, when we got in the elevator. He was like, yo, I heard some shots. But remember, Pac, the only one that kind of crawled, got in the elevator and crawled upstairs. That's where he saw Andre Harrell. He saw everybody uh -huh. upstairs. So when I got downstairs, that already happened. So the other niggas were still downstairs that, you know, right. the niggas were still... So basically, you coming down, he going up. He going up, yeah. So I never saw him downstairs. Right. So when you went back up. I went back upstairs. After we, the niggas told us to get back in the elevator, I was so paranoid, I'm hitting door open. So the door went closed for like two minutes. <laughs> right. Wow. Dude, like this with the... But he's seeing it like... There's a part in the movie... That, that the guy like plays you right. with special shout out shout out special. Get the fuck back in the elevator for a make change out your ass. Yeah, and that you know, I, I mean movie, but that wasn't. But they were just it was. You know, this is some real situation going on. It was a. Well, I think once they saw it was some little young kids like oh it's some young kids get the fuck back in the elevator. It was that type of thing. That's how I took it. Uh huh. When the elevator door finally closed on his own. Cause I was pushing door open. I looked at Nino. We got upstairs. I went so big. I said, "Yo, big, y'all getting thrown down right now." I said, "Pop, you mean?" Yeah, I mean, pop. Yo, pop downstairs getting thrown down right now. Big, so, man, stop playing with me. So, just to slow you down, cause I'm, just for clarity, mm -hmm. Pop is not on your floor. He didn't. He, he the elevator didn't take him to your. It floor. took him to the sixth. Where there was sixth floor. Sixth floor. You went back to the eighth floor. To our floor where we was at. Now, on the sixth floor was who? Andre Harrell. May rest in peace. Shout out to Andre. Yeah, yeah. Um, R.P. But we didn't even know. Understand. We didn't know they was there. You got to understand. Right. We didn't know. None of this was going. None of them was downstairs. We don't know. We went to our floor. And we was upstairs. So we didn't know. Excuse me. We didn't know Puff just came in there. Puff was just shooting the warning video. With him driving down um, Times Square with the phone. Puff and the drop top. There. He just came there to check on Big Session to come with us. But he to find out where we at, you had to go to the sixth floor. Uh -huh. So when Pop got shot and went upstairs, that's where he saw everybody upstairs at. Like, you know, I, I can't tell you if that's true because I wasn't on that floor. So I don't know who was up there. When he said he saw Andre, he saw Puff, he saw Sean. We never saw them, though. He was on the eighth floor. So we that's where we came from. You know what I mean? So I never knew all them was up there. And Puff was like, yo, I was on my way coming up there to see where y'all room was. You had to go to the sixth floor to go, yo, where the Junior Mafia session at? Oh, I was on the eighth floor. Elevator go two flights up. And when all that happened, that's where Pop got on the elevator and saw all of them up there on the sixth floor. Wow. You know what I mean? So a so, lot of people don't know that, but we right. didn't know that they was there. And we was on our floor. So y'all never actually got a chance to see him in... Not until the, he came downstairs. Because everybody that they... He was bringing out the building. Of course, after he got shot, you know, you couldn't leave the building. You couldn't go nowhere. Everybody that came downstairs, they took your information, put you up on the side of the wall until you couldn't leave until they knew what was going on. So the last time I saw him was when they welded him down in the, in the stretcher. In the stretcher. Right. That's the last time we saw him. And, you know, of course, after that, he went to court. And he got found guilty for the rape thing and went to jail. So we never got a chance to even but see him after that. Let me ask you. Did Big try to go see him in the in the hospital and, and couldn't get in or something like that? Yeah, 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 definitely. They wouldn't, let, yeah, they wouldn't let Big up there. But Big went and took him. Big went and took him his uh his uh his ratchet that he had. But once he got upstairs, he put his ratchet in the piano. So Big went back to Quad the next day and got it. 
and took it back to the hospital for him, but they wouldn't let Big go. Couldn't see the two two robbers that was on both sides. Right. So I'm just like thinking they drunk and just bugging out, and I walk out. The next thing you know, dude from the dude with the fatigue shit, just like yo, get the fuck back in the elevator. As far as that ride interview, just read everything over and read my reply, read their reply, read what people say. Everybody that was there knows what happened. I mean, my recollection of the story was I was shooting a video the second half of Warning, which is on the B side of Big Papa, and I was shooting that around the block, and I heard my man was um, up in the studio doing a Junior Mafia session. So I got off at the reception area, and I saw Andre and Little Sean. So I saw him saying, what's up to me? I'm about to get on the elevator, and he comes out shot. Tupac article had me pissed off, you know what I'm saying? Because first of all, he dissed my man, said my man turned his back on him, and I know for a fact that didn't happen, you know what I'm saying? And like, the rumors that's spreading is on some tip like, we set him up, you know what I'm saying? And that's crazy. As soon as he comes out shot, me and my man, we go, we try to sit him down. He calls his mom, he asks my man if he could roll him a blunt. You know what I'm saying? We asked him if he's alright. He's like, yeah, I'm alright, I don't know what's going on. Giving me no money, giving me no respect, giving me no tribute. Rolling with my road dog who was there when I got shot. I mean, come on, man. I'm not paranoid. I'm not paranoid. Did y'all niggas know what time it is? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know yeah. that the East Coast drug dealers got the niggas as extortion. I came and fucked up heaven. We just there trying to comfort him. Andre Harrell went and made sure he called, was calling the ambulance. And I mean, everybody that was there was very supportive of him. It was just the total opposite. As soon as he came out, everybody ran towards him. It was nothing but love and concern. They got different, different accounts of what happened, and I'm the one with the bullet wounds. I also understand that if you was to get shot five times, your mind is just completely spinning, you know what I'm saying? You're real confused about your situation. So it'll cause you to say things that you really don't mean. I was there for the whole thing. No one else was there for the whole thing. I don't really know the purpose of why the story was said in another way of context. It's not important that other people know what happened to me. I just said it. Now that I said it, it's dead. You can believe me or not believe me. I did what I had to do. I mean, God knows the truth. There's no religion about getting shot. I'm not trying to get any converts. After getting shot, I was like, shit, I don't know who to trust. In a bizarre twist of events, rap singer Tupac Shakur checked himself out of Bellevue Hospital late Wednesday night. Just hours after surgery, Tupac checked himself out of Bellevue Hospital against doctor's orders. It was just time to leave. I didn't feel safe there. The phone kept ringing, kept getting these crazy phone calls. Mr. Shakur, open up, please, open up, please. Excuse me, excuse me. Just keep it tight, that's all. Mr. Shakur, how are you this morning? The jury continued deliberations. Then, after two days of incredible plot twists worthy of a Hollywood drama, Tupac Shakur has finally had one question answered. Tonight, the jury found him guilty of three counts of sexual abuse, but innocent on six other charges, including sodomy. And sentencing for this trial has yet to be scheduled. Right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We sat down and talked and shit, and he, he couldn't answer. So after when I broke it down to him, I said, what jury was stuck in, motherfucker? You know, describe the jury to me. What was speaking? How did it go down? He was just speechless, and the whole car, everybody just looking at him like, this motherfucker here, he couldn't say shit. Yeah, that's a damn lie, man. First of all, one of the bracelets, right? It was a mother like a handcuff bracelet, the balls with the diamonds on it. Motherfuckers ain't know that. He had another bi bracelet that was like a bicycle chain and shit with charms on it, all right? Mm -hmm. Just gonna say that, all right? He had the diamond chain on with the di with the chain with diamonds at each length going through it, right? He had a big stone on a diamond ring and a smaller stone, one for 35000 and the one for 20000 all right? The motherfucker even, even stretched that did this shit. I took his bracelet too. Yeah, and changed it and put his fuck name, my man name on it, and took off the name on it. So motherfuckers 
claiming it did shit. Even oh, uh, so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, homie. Claimed that he was a uh, Tupac stepdaddy. Hey. Uh, wrote me and shit, and wanted me to have my people meet him, hey, and he should talk about some redemption shit. You ain't, 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 ain't had shit, man. Stretch was with them too. Yeah, Stretch was. Stretch set the whole shit up. He was um, in cahoots. He was uh, giving us play by play where they was at. The whole on their way there, he was in, 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 in communication with Jimmy and shit. You know, Jimmy, Jimmy promised them uh, two, 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 two uh, big eights and shit. Don't you think if you shoot somebody five times, you should kill them? That's what I think. So, if y'all gonna be robbers and killers, be robbers and killers, man. Y'all just gonna be fucking up a nigga clothes. <laughs> y'all do that. Cause that's all y'all end up doing was fucking up my clothes, man. I was out the hospital 24 hours. I know you heard about me. Nigga, you ain't stopped nothing. It's the hug line. I thought you knew. So y'all cut that out. If you're gonna come shoot me, kill me. If you're not gonna kill me, stop shooting me. Stop shooting at me. Don't come for me unless you're gonna come and get me. Cause I'm with you, I'm in the gang too, but nigga don't be half ass doing it. Who are on these interviews? I had one with Stretch, and one with Biggie. Word? Oh, yeah. Wow. So who's first? Let's hear Stretch. Okay, so this is Stretch, mm -hmm. who's no longer with us, but Stretch was like Tupac's right hand at the time. He was in that lobby right. when the stick up happened at Quad Studio. Yeah, we get to the studio, she loves being. Most people are thinking that Pac was shot multiple times. Then Stretch is emphasizing it was only one shot. Whoa. Stretch sees Pac makes a move for his gun. And then he hears the shot go off. So apparently that's the one shot that we know he received in the groin. Well, well we Freddie got had Freddy some kind of right. some kind of wounds right there. We're in a tight space. It seems like it could have been a ricochet. Pop shot himself. Uh, I can only imagine. So let's play some of Biggie. Based on what I've heard, I believe Pac rewrote that story and then spun a whole new yarn. Because he was embarrassed? I don't think he wanted that story. Wow. Being that this is the first time I heard about it, I would have to give that some thought to see what would be Stretch's motive. What did he stand to lose from that? What did he stand to gain from that? It's almost kind of like the Suge had Pac set up situation. Stretch is dead that day, so he's got to be able to hope that, you know, these guys don't bust him, shoot him by accident. You know, yeah. it's a lot of things that got to go right for that conspiracy theory to, to be valid. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't, you know, I'm if, if, if the shit don't make sense to me, like, almost immediately, I start to question it. Early this morning, the violence found in Shakur's music and private life may have caught up with him. The rapper was critically wounded in a hail of bullets outside a New York City recording studio. Well, tell me what happened at the recording studios in Times Square. I got shot five times. I walked in, some dudes walked in and shot me up. Um, took some jewelry. According to police, the shooting started after three gunmen approached the rap star and his bodyguard, demanding they turn over their jewelry. Oh, 
some class, though. Come get these, yeah. and when you come get these, we can talk about the last ones, and we can all get better acquainted, because I don't got nothing but love for y'all. I just want to tell you, <laughs> you miss, motherfucker. Can we talk? Can we talk? I think that there will be people who will say this is something that he brought on himself. Alan Light is the music editor for Vibe magazine. So I think there's been a real sort of ticking time bomb sense. Do you think that they shot you just to get your jewelry? I don't know. It's like anybody's guess. I don't know. I don't really like to talk about it. You, you got shot last year. Talk about this. This whole year has been a pretty heavy, oh, traumatic yeah. year since about no, the yeah. end of '93 or something like no, that. No, beginning of '94. Talk about that. Talk about a little bit about getting shot. I got shot five times by some dudes who wanted my jewelry. That's what they said they wanted my jewelry, but I think they're trying to rub me out, really. Mm -hmm. What is what is it? Because man, they wanted my jewelry. They should, they could have took my jewelry. They didn't take everything. Don't nobody, don't robbers don't leave behind uh, eighty thousand dollar Rolexes. You know what I mean? They don't do that. In case nobody knows. Shakur was shot five times with wounds to the head, groin area, and hand. Hey, hey, got no. fully prepared, though. No. Okay. Hey, hey, but the funny shit, I got shot five times, ain't never bullet going my chest. Can you tell me, is this a random shooting? Oh, it's not investigation. Do you think it was a premeditated shooting? Do you think someone was waiting for him? At any point, did you think that you were going to die after being shot five times? No. These shits ain't no good. I'm just wearing it because it's like it's warm. It's like a vest, you know. So you had a bulletproof when you when you got shot. You had a bullet. Hell no, nah, but ain't never bullet go through my chest. Hey, so you don't need that shit. I'm saying, but I don't want niggas to switch up on me and I ain't with it. If they decide to shoot me in my chest this time. <laughs> The shooting of Tupac Shakur here in New York City once again underscores the incidents of violence that seem to have surrounded this man ever since he shot to superstardom in the world of music and entertainment. No, I didn't. Immediately, I was like, God, oh, man, I know how it's going to be when I die. It's going to be no, no noise. You're going to hear people screaming. I'm going to fade out. Do you know who shot you? No. Is that a no or is that a maybe? No, I don't know who no. shot you. So does that mean that you also have no idea why they shot you? No, I have no idea why they shot me. Usually we'll rob you and break break out. Mm -hmm. You know, robbers don't stop too many times to fill you with five bullets. And don't nobody, there's four people there, and you're the only nigga to catch five bullets. Robbers don't do it like that. Those are murderers who do things like that. But it's all good. I'm, You know, God, great, let me come back. I am man. Um, I don't got no, no problems with nobody. I wish peace and happiness. And, uh... I think there's been a real sort of ticking time bomb sense around Tupac that he, something bad was going to happen, whether it was going to be something he did or something that was done to him. It seemed like there was a time, though, that you were definitely reveling in the image of sort of being wild and crazy. And what got you off that path? Five hot bullets. I'll Nobody come downstairs to act unshot. And then after you shot, now how did you, after you shot, you went up there and they looked at the truck, he was a goat? Yo, when I walked upstairs, swear on oh, hey, I love I seen it in their eyes. I can never describe this look, but to you be shot and you see yourself. Experts said the eight months he spent in prison did not affect Shakur's star status. In fact, they said it may have even added to his bad boy reputation. In the area of gangster rap, there doesn't seem many rap stars left. Tupac Shakur. And we got a new album out called Thug Life. Well, I've done plenty of things wrong in my life, but I've done nothing criminally wrong in the case that I'm um, serving.